Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of How to Draw Cars. My name is Michael, and today we're going to do something a little bit different in the sense that I'm going to walk you through a real project where I was asked to design the liveries for a pair of Audi RS3 race cars. But before we get started, two pieces of business. If you're a team owner or manager and you're looking to work with someone on a new livery design, I can be reached at this website with the links below. And if you're looking to take your automotive design skills to the next level, check out the Introduction to Automotive Design course on the Udemy platform. The links are below. So let's check out the Audi RS3 as it comes from the factory. You can see there's a massive rear wing, there's a rear diffuser, toe straps, the fenders are flared, it rolls on racing slicks, there's some side skirts, there's a front splitter, and there's a massive cooling vent in the hood. But more importantly, these are the things that the client wants to make sure that are in the design. The car has to be easy to pick out on the track. It can't be too boy racer or hot wheels. It has to use a palette that the client specified and it has to just look awesome. Okay, so let's get started. Now, there's two things I want you to notice here. One is that up until this point on the channel, I've always drawn with a pencil and now I'm drawing with a ballpoint. I'm doing ballpoint on bond paper. This is Xerox paper or copy paper. It's very cheap, very available. The size is 11 by 17, which is an excellent size for car designers to use. And the pen is a black Papermate ballpoint. If you have the option of using blue or black, I would always suggest using black. The one thing that I want you to notice, or hopefully you have noticed already as you're watching this, is how fluid my motion is because I'm drawing from my shoulder with the, with the ballpoint. So it doesn't matter what the material is. It doesn't matter if you're using a paintbrush, a ballpoint, a pencil. The technique is what's important. The second thing that I want to bring to your attention is that I'm drawing over an underlay. I'm drawing over a photograph of the car. Now this is a real car, as you've seen. So I don't need to reinvent anything here. In many ways, drawing over the package drawing over an underlay of an actual car is very similar to what you do working in either a production studio or a concept studio for a major manufacturer. When you work designing real cars in the real world, you're given what's called a package drawing. And the package drawing is what you sketch over to come up with your theme. And the reason why I bring this up is because it gets to the heart of what this video is about, which is process that we each have a process that we are taught or we develop a process of our own in a way that allows us to be creative. But sometimes you have to reinvent that process or try a new process in order to take your talent and your creativity to a whole new level. So sketching over the package is just one way to approach designing a livery. But as you'll see, it is not the only way. So one thing that I wanted to do is to set up basically a blank canvas, the Audi as a blank canvas. I'm looking at this in a very painterly way. And so one thing I wanted to do is to create the black racing wheels for delivery design. So that was a number six gray Prismacolor marker, permanent marker, alcohol-based marker. And now I'm coming back with a number four Prismacolor marker, but there's not really a lot of difference between the two as you can see. But again, I'm building up the surfaces here. So now I'm coming in with a Copic marker, number, number eight, and what I'm representing here is the shadow. These are concave wheels. So the center point is in farther than the edge. And so you're gonna get that hard shadow at the top versus the light catching at the bottom. So now I'm just drawing in the spokes. I'm using a Sharpie marker. Sharpies tend to represent a good value in a permanent marker, and they do give you a very consistent black tone. If you have any questions about the techniques or anything that I'm doing in the drawing and in this demo, of course, please ask in the comments below. So I'm just hitting this with a little bit of chalk, which is gonna put some light on those lower spokes. So I've got the upper spokes completely black, and now the lower spokes 
have some light on them. That's why they're turning light gray, or getting lighter as they come down towards the edge of the rim. Now I'm gonna use my white pencil to create a very crisp edge to both rims. The white lines really go a long way to cleaning up what is essentially just a bunch of rough lines. And again, it defines the edge of that rim. And now I'm grabbing that number five gray again, and I'm coming back in and I'm putting in the space between the disc and the barrel of the rim. And so that's gonna give the disc some presence behind those black spokes. So again, this, there's nothing finished about this. This is not a presentation level drawing. This is just me having fun, trying to create a platform that I can then go and start working out some ideas for delivery. Now I was asked by the client to do a theme for delivery that was inspired by the Audi press car. And so the client gave me a color palette to work with and asked if I could do the next generation of that. That's what I'm trying to work out here. I'm trying to figure out what the relationships are going to be to these various rectangles that are gonna make up this livery. My livery designs always have a sense of movement and have a lot of energy in them. This was a livery that I did for Vector for the M12 race program. This was a show car that was shown at the Detroit Auto Show. And the idea behind this one was that the car drove through the American flag and the flag was stretched over the vehicle. So again, very dynamic. So now I've just picked up a light gray and I'm just blocking in some basic tones. Again, trying to make the glass look transparent and have that separate from where I've drew, drawn my rectangles, which will be opaque. So I will have some opaque areas in the glazed areas of the car. That was one of the things that I set out to do was to have the windows, the non-essential areas of the windows be covered with graphics to set the design apart. At this point, I'm feeling pretty good about the pattern and it's time to move to digital. So I'm gonna take the ideas from that rough sketch and I'm gonna come into Illustrator and I'm gonna to start to build my livery with the color palette, again, specified by the client, which was Nagano Blue and Dolphin Gray over a base, either matte or gloss black car. When I showed the client the finished Illustrator drawing, he was pleased, but he wanted to see a second proposal and told me I can do whatever I wanted. The team's name is Desert Flight Racing, and the new colors are red and yellow. The same colors as a desert sunset. And this is where I would draw my inspiration. I've said it many times on the channel and mentioned it often in my Udemy course that if you wanna create something truly unique and original, you have to look outside the sphere that you're operating in. So in this case, I drew my inspiration from those brilliant desert colors and the quote by Andy Warhol. And so what I'm doing here is changing my process. I went from white paper to black. I'm drawing with a white pencil and I'm not even drawing a complete car. I'm just drawing the front clip to give myself a point of departure. Before I became a professional car designer, I was a successful fine artist in New York City. I knew if I was gonna come up with something truly original and unique, I would have to treat this as if I was doing a painting, not a livery design for a race team. So my sketching technique changed accordingly. I wasn't really focused on the car and what I could do on the car. I was really just looking for an expression an expression of speed and color, everything that I love about racing and everything that my artwork has always looked to express. By changing the process, I would hopefully find a new expression that I wouldn't have found drawing cars and hopefully come up with something that would inspire the client and would think, yeah, let's build this. Let's make this thing real. That's what I was going for.
Now comes the hard part. Take this raw emotional expression and move to digital without losing the gesture, the emotion, the movement, and the energy. So once again, back to a blank canvas where I'm going to attempt to implement that sketch on the car. Now the three things that the client wanted in the design had not changed. It still had to be easily identifiable on the track in a sea of other cars. It still had to have a sophisticated design and it still had to use obviously the palette that the client had given me. So what do you guys think? Is this a more sophisticated design than the rectangle design? Is this more easily identifiable on the track? And maybe most importantly, have I transferred that energy, that movement and that theme from that painterly sketch to the actual car itself? Now let's take a look at it with all the logos. And there you go. And now it's time to compare the two themes. Let's look at the rectangle design based again on the Audi press car. And then we have the desert streak theme, which is a completely original design based on the desert sunset and on the idea that at speed, all colors blur. So here is a professional example of what can happen when you change up your process, when you get yourself out of your comfort zone. It yielded a highly creative and original solution to the design problem presented by the client. If you like the content, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And as always, thanks for watching.